Lord be with you. Welcome home to St. Mark's for this Holy Trinity service. We're celebrating the great mystery of our faith, God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three persons, yet one God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful, of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity. And bring us at last into your presence where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. We have three readings today, each one of them expressing one part of the Godhead. The first, God the Father. The second, God is Holy Spirit. And the third, God is the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You'll notice there's no organ today, and that's because Ted is recovering from a hand injury. We're hoping that all will be well for next week when we celebrate Corpus Christi. Now listen and hear the word of God. First, from the book of Psalms, Psalm 93. The Lord is King forever and ever. The Lord is king with majesty and robed. The Lord has robed himself with might. He has girded himself with power. The Lord is king forever and ever. The world you made firm not to be moved. Your throne has stood firm from of old. From all eternity, O Lord, you are. The Lord is King forever and ever. The floods have lifted up 
O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods have lifted up their thunder. The Lord is King forever and ever. Greater than the roar of mighty waters, more glorious than the surges of the sea, the Lord is glorious on high, the Lord is King forever and ever. Truly your decrees are to be trusted, holiness is fitting to your house, O Lord, until the end of time. The Lord is King forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. God the Father, creator of holiness. Moses, the great man of God, was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, which is the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to Moses out of the bush, Moses! Moses! And Moses said, Here I am. Then the Lord said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. The Lord said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. The Old Testament, the First Testament, perhaps the better word, is full of awe of God. We know this God as God the Father because God, Jesus taught us to say, Our Father, who art in heaven. But you remember that song that we sing from time to time here at St. Mark's. Our God is an awesome God. This is what this passage is all about. Take off your shoes, Moses. You're on holy ground. And do not look. You are unworthy to look at the glory, the face of God. I've explained from time to time that there is an understanding among us Christians of holiness that it has two parts to it, attraction and repulsion. We are attracted to the holy, and yet we are repelled by it. 
We want to be part of it, to gaze on it, and yet we're afraid to do that. It's a definition of the holy. And that is God's first expression to his people. Know that I am God, and know it from the mighty waters, and the thunders, and the lightnings, and the fire of holiness. God the Father. Next, God the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 to 17. God the Holy Spirit, sanctifier of believers. Paul writes, So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the flesh, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the very children of God. For you didn't receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received a spirit of adoption. And when we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God the Holy Spirit. We just celebrated last week the coming down of the Holy Spirit as flame upon those apostles gathered in Jerusalem on Pentecost Day. It gave them power. But as Paul says, it also was a sign of adoption that we Christians, through the power and love and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, are children. We understand ourselves to be the very children of God, brothers and sisters of the Son of God, Christ. And as Paul says, if the Spirit shows us that, then we have nothing to fear. Nothing to fear about life eternal. Nothing to fear about whatever happens to us in this world. We are the very children of God through the Spirit, which animated our brother and our Savior and our Lord, Jesus the Christ of Father God. Spirit of the living God indeed, fall afresh on me and then use me. 
because I have no fear to do what you ask. You will empower me, my father, my dad, my Abba. And now, God, as Jesus Christ, the Son of God, crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of lords, who over all doth reign, who once on earth the incarnate word for ransomed sinners slain, now lives in realms of light, where saints with angels sing their songs before him day and night, their God redeemer King. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, Son of God, leader of those who believe in him, sanctifier too of those who believe in him. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night, and he said to him, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can someone enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born again? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What's born of the flesh is flesh, and what's born of the spirit is spirit. Don't be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it but you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. And so it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? And Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you don't understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you don't receive our testimony. If I've told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, 
the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You'll notice in this gospel reading that the three persons of God come together. We have T Jesus, who in his time was a rabbi. Some began to recognize him as what he said he was, the very son of God. Jesus says to Nicodemus, the spirit will rebirth you. And then he says, no one has seen the glory of God except the one who has descended from God, me, and is going back to God, son of man, me. So in Jesus Christ, we have all three persons in one right there. We have God the Father, we have God the Holy Spirit, and we have God the Son, who is both fully human and fully divine. The Trinity is one of those mysteries that I keep seeing, saying must be lived because it can't ever be fully understood. And I've put as the icon for the uh, bulletin for today. And you'll see it if you look up the, uh, uh, the email uh, with, with that bulletin in it, the order of service. A kind of Mobius strip. God Father, God Son, God Holy Spirit, God Father, God Son. It never ends. And it's totally, there's no beginning, there's no ending. It's totally one wrapped within itself. As I say, a profound mystery. And it's something we live out as Christians. Maybe not self-consciously, but in our actions we express the fullness of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We acclaim that God in this worship now. The Nicene Creed is the classic and fullest expression of our Trinitarian faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from hell. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary 
and was made bare. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, in the power of Holy Spirit, with God the Father and God the Son, we offer prayers for the world as well as for the Church. First, for the Church throughout the world, that we may continue to enjoy seasons of hope and refreshment, new beginnings, and fervent witnessing and ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Next, for the forgiveness of our sins. That being freed in Christ, we may repent, confess them with a sincere heart, ask forgiveness of God and our neighbor, and make up for our wrongs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for the whole world around us and abroad, that it may one day be entirely reconciled under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now for the sick and the suffering. For those especially we lift up before you in our hearts. Our shut-in. All caregivers. All who labor and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Especially in this time of COVID for the unemployed and the destitute. And for prisoners of all kinds, captives of all kinds, and for everyone who remembers and cares for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Defend us, deliver us, and in your compassion protect us, O Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, by your grace. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Remember, my brothers and sisters, we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And why? That we should show forth the praises of him who has brought us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Father, we have this bread to offer. May it become to us the very body of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we have this wine to offer. May it become to us the precious blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Everything in the universe is yours. Lord Jesus, thank you. I give you what you first gave me. I give you my hands to do your work. I give you my feet to go your way. I give you my eyes to see as you see. I give you my tongue to speak your words. I give you my mind to think as you think. I give you my spirit so that you may pray in me. I give you my heart so that you may love in me. I give you myself so that you may grow in me. All things come of you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. You have revealed your glory as the glory also of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, three persons, 
equal in majesty, undivided in splendor. Yet one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your everlasting glory. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your majesty is everlasting, and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood in the time of Noah. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea and wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise and thanks to you for the prophets and their witness. And praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the recalling of me. With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Spirit on us, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence, reveal yourself to us in the breaking of bread, raise us up as the body of Christ for the world and breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace and love. 
Come, Holy Spirit. With Saint Mark and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Brothers and sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ given for us. Amen. blood of Christ shed for us. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we take and eat these in remembrance that Christ died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In this time of isolation, we are sorry that we cannot be together in person to commune with you and with the family who gathered at St. Mark's. Even so, we give you thanks that we can receive you spiritually through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in faith toward more fervent love toward you and one another. In Jesus Christ our Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. There is a custom in some parts of Christianity to sing a Te Deum at special times in the church year. It's the hymn of rejoicing. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. Some of us Lutherans will remember that from morning prayer. Anglicans will know it from morning prayer. It's part of the praise of the church that's been around a very, very long time. I offer it today as part of the conclusion of this praise of Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which again, you will hear in the Te Deum. This one, the famous one written for Lutherans by Healy Willen. We praise Thee, O God, we acknowledge Thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship Thee, the Father everlasting. To Thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To Continually do cry, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee, the noble army of martyrs praise thee, the holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the majesty, thine adorable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ, Son of the Father. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever, world without end. Alleluia. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.